Is artwork the ultimate inflation hedge? Today, we're joined by Nigel Glende, the chief financial officer at Masterworks, which is an art investment company in New York City. Nigel is going to give us his perspective on investing in artwork, using that strategy to grow our wealth and to diversify. So Nigel, welcome to the program. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks for uh, having me and uh, look forward to speaking with you and telling you a bit more about art from an investment perspective. Yeah, I was thinking maybe to start out, what we could do is you could just kind of give a little bit of art investing overview and mm -hmm. then talk a little bit about maybe what Masterworks does kind of within that niche. Sure. A lot of our viewers are military, uh, veterans, government employees, and they don't necessarily have uh, investing as, in art as an option or, or or are even aware of it. So if you could give a little bit of a, an overview of it broadly first, that would, I think, help our audience out. Well, I'm, I'm delighted and, and honored to, to speak with your uh, audience and uh, servicemen and women um, as well. So thanks for, thanks for having me on. The art market. So uh, Masterworks, as you point out, is an art investment platform. And, and our mission is to make art as an asset class investable for the investment community uh, broadly. So the same way that investors um, will add stocks, bonds, other asset classes to a long-term portfolio, whether it's savings for um, uh, near-term objectives or long-term uh, retirement, art can be a very interesting risk diversifier um, within, within that portfolio. And that's what Masterworks uh, does fundamentally. And the way we do that is by transforming physical artwork, you can think about that as paintings, into single stocks, the same way um, that stocks can be added to uh, any other uh, portfolio. So why the art market? Um, the art market is uh, one that has existed for a, uh, a considerable amount of time, centuries really. It's, uh, it's, it's a market that uh, exists. Uh, it's a market that is global. Uh, art is transacted uh, around the world. Um, and it's one that's quite large. Um, it's a market that in terms of asset value, and I think many people don't quite appreciate this, um, is valued at anywhere from uh, 1.5 to $1.7 trillion. So it's, it's quite a large market. And the whole world of auctions and private sales and galleries and fairs and all these things you you hear about amount to anywhere from 50 to 70 billion dollars of transaction value. So it's a significant market and one that among uh, among all of that has proven that it can appreciate um, over time. And the way we can measure that is through creating indices the same way we might measure uh, any other type of asset class, um, notably something like real estate. So we use a lot of those same techniques to understand how has the art market appreciated, and particularly the contemporary art market, which is what uh, Masterworks is fo focused on. And we found that that's appreciated uh, in excess of the S&P 500 over the last 25 years, and has done so in a way that really is not tied to other factors in the macro economy. So when you step back, you see an asset class that's large, it's global, it's appreciated over time, and it really merits a strategic allocation uh, for investors who are looking to diversify their sources uh, of risk in their, in their portfolio. So the only practical way to do that um, uh, prior to Masterworks was buying art yourself, right? And where's, so where's the trouble with that? The art that tends to appreciate over time and that has real um, long-term uh, commercial value over time have tended to be artwork that is priced in excess of half a million to a million dollars. So, of course, not only does that create quite a barrier to entry for a single individual, but obviously makes even for quite large investors diversification virtually impossible. Um, so Masterworks has to create a structure where investors can allocate to physical artwork uh, in the same way they might do in a fractionalized way that they're buying portions of companies that they do with single stocks. And that's at the heart what Masterworks does and why we're so excited about the art market in particular. So this is interesting, Nigel, that, that you bring this up because this is something I've, I've had a particular interest in over the years in the sense that art 
where that sector of the market has always seemed to be kind of something that only the wealthy could get involved in. Um, and yet what Masterworks, you can correct me if I'm wrong, what they seem to be doing is making that available now to really everybody. I mean, if you can buy a share uh, of Masterworks, you essentially can own a piece of, you know, a rare piece of art and take advantage of that same appreciation. Is yeah, that kind of, go ahead. That, that, that's exactly right. And, and I think what's even more exciting for us is, you know, we've built our business around, uh, you know, tens of thousands of um, individual self-directed investors um, and now also adding uh, investors through their financial advisors as well. So what we do is really uh, applicable for uh, the investor community broadly defined. So whether you're an individual investor looking to add artwork uh, to your own portfolio, or whether you're a professional investor looking to add artwork to either client portfolios or more institutional portfolios, we really enable investment from both of those channels. So is you'd mentioned before that art as an index has outperformed the S&P 500. I think you said S&P 500. Correct. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you said that over the last you know, 25 years, is there a particular art index uh, that you're referring to. Um, again, a lot of our viewers aren't familiar with a lot of these indices, and I think that would be great. Like, is there a benchmark art index that you use? Uh, how does Masterworks do? You, do you compare yourself to a particular benchmark? And and you know, what type of art do you invest in? I guess it's kind of like a multifaceted question. So why, yeah, why don't I start start at the um, at the last question there and, and work backwards? Okay. So. Masterworks focuses on the contemporary art market. So you can think okay. about that as art that is created after World War II. So really art over the last 70 years. And why do we focus on contemporary art? That is the segment that has proven it's been able to appreciate over time. And one of the things I don't think is entirely well um, understood by many um, outsiders looking into the art market um, is that it's typically the more recent vintages of art that tend to exhibit the highest levels uh, of appreciation. Um, and as you look back in time over really generational increments, art uh, uh, price appreciation tends to then converge towards inflation. So if you look back in time across uh, uh, impressionists and old masters, you'll find that those uh, appreciation rates um, may again uh, converge somewhere towards uh, towards uh, inflation. So really what what is most interesting to us is that um, contemporary contemporary segment. Now how do we measure that? you brought up you brought up indices. What's so interesting about the art market is the availability of data and transactional data, right? Because I mentioned it's a large market. It's a global market. And half of the market uh, trades at public auctions. So Sotheby's, Christie's, Phillips, even smaller auction houses like Heritage you may have heard of, produce a tremendous amount of public transaction data around what objects sell for at what prices. So this gives really the market the ability to, one, just understand value. Once you have a variety of different what we call comparable sales, if I'm looking at a painting, if I have the ability to compare that price to the prices of similar paintings, now I can start to build confidence around prices today, but I can also start to build confidence about how those prices have moved over time. This is not a totally um, different exercise than what might someone might do uh, around valuing uh, their own home. You might ask, well, how do you, how does one value art? Doesn't art, you know, isn't art so subjective? And the reality is, again, because there is this robust market of public auctions and also private auctions, we as Masterworks and the rest of the market can look at publicly available comparable sales, objects that are painted by the same artist that have similar industry uh, uh, imagery that were painted at roughly the same time um, that have other similar characteristics to help us triangulate um, around value. So that's that's one part, an index. So how do we arrive at an index over time, right? Because the art market, um, I'm told Masterworks, 
doesn't have a tradable market. It doesn't continuously trade like a like a stock like Apple or Amazon does. So how how do you how do you measure what's happening in these prices over time? Well, one of the most robust way to do uh, approaches to do that is to create what's called a repeat sales index, and that might be a somewhat technical um, uh, term, but what it is, it's an index based on observing the same object that has sold at auction multiple times. So if I see an object or a painting that has sold, say at Sotheby's at one period, and then 10 years later, I saw it sell again, now I have two transactions and I can infer how that painting has appreciated over time. And if I do that across tens of thousands of paintings, then I can start to understand how the market has moved over time. And this is exactly the same approach that's used for indices to measure home price indices. So this is a technique um, that was actually uh, uh, started by NYU professors, uh, has been replicated uh, by Sotheby's, um, has been replicated by ourselves um, internally building our own um, indices as a way for us to understand overall appreciation in the market and also drilling down. So not just understanding how is the art market appreciated over time, but how have specific works by specific artists appreciate, appreciated over time. And that is just a crucial decision making uh, point um, that we focus on in terms of what artists we want to be adding to our portfolio. Nigel, is there a uh, general level of risk associated with art? Like in my mind, if I'm investing in art, I'm thinking it's probably going to be a little bit more of a safe haven uh, because essentially it's, you know, it's, it's like a commodity. It's something that retains its value, you know, over periods of time. And so I see it as being less risky. Uh, in your experience or based on your expertise, uh, would you classify that as correct? Would you say it's kind of more of a, on the safe haven ca category, more of like a commodity, or is it a little bit more riskier uh, like the stock market? It very, it very much uh, depends on the segment of the art market um, one is one is focused on, and and this um, this is a point we spend a lot of time thinking about, and one of the most important factors in determining really the variance in return outcome is actually price point. What we found is art that you may buy at re relatively, now I'm going to say low price points, but in, 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 in broad context, actually it's still quite high, but art that's priced maybe $100,000 and, and below, um, you may see examples like this at, at major art fairs or things that you might enjoy decoratively in your own home. Very interesting, maybe from an aesthetic and a personal nostalgia standpoint, but whether something appreciates over time is really a, there's a huge amount of variability and if you're buying art at that level it's really buying you know the art you love and you want to be able uh to live with art that um has has a really what i call a proven secondary market so that trades at major auction houses that trades hands that has had that um uh, ability to be as you point out a store of value tends to be art that's going to be transacted at a half a million to a million dollars and up and price points there are really a proxy for a couple couple different things it's a proxy for understanding whether an artist is globally uh, uh, commercially successful uh, do they have co collectors around the world have they traded at major public auctions are they in that big evening sale at christie's um, or Sotheby's. So price point isn't everything, but price point is a is an easy rule of thumb way to understand whether those things are present in a um, in a given artist market. So we have found that art again that is priced anywhere from half a million to an up has a much narrower band of return outcomes and has the ability to be that store of value uh, type investment with the ability to appreciate um, over time. Now, art and masterworks generally should really be thought of as long-term capital appreciation um, investments. 
our uh, investments and we add to our portfolio, we expect resale on the short end within three years or as long as 10 years. We want to be very opportunistic as to when we eventually resell our um, out of our portfolio. So from our investor standpoint, um, we spend a lot of time with investors understanding their suitability, uh, their comfort with taking a longer term capital appreciation um, uh, position as well. Now, Massworks as a, as a platform uh, does offer multiple paths um, uh, to liquidity. Um, uh, again, the first and foremost is we resell uh, the art uh, over time. That's the primary source of liquidity. We also avail on a complementary basis our trading market. So a trading market allows investors uh, to sell or buy, uh, add to their portfolio shares on a secondary market um, on an opportunistic basis uh, if they if they need. When you mentioned, you know, um, the prices that are higher, right above a half a million, being kind of more the long-term store value. Are those the ones that Masterworks focuses on, or do you have like a broad portfolio? Like you have some of that and some of the other, or what, what, uh, you know, are you more the higher end or are you kind of a mix? Well, I would say well, where we land, the average painting in our portfolio is roughly $2 million. That, okay. that is kind of at the half million dollars at the, at the lower end. We have a couple okay. of things that may be sub there. Um, our Basquiat portfolio has paintings that are anywhere from 20 to $30 million. And that's solely certain markets that really transact at, at that, um, at that level. So we have a, a kind of a broad spectrum portfolio across, um, contemporary art. We're incredibly proud of the diversified portfolio, um, uh, we've built, we're knocking on the door of a billion dollars. Um, in art value that we've built over the last uh, nearly five years. So we've become one of the most active uh, buyers and soon to be sellers uh, in the contemporary uh, art market. We work across all major art market intermediaries and direct uh, to collector to be able to, to uh, deliver that type of portfolio to our investors. You mentioned that based on the analysis you've done, you know, going back a number of years that, you know, the, those pieces of artwork that are priced higher or, or kind of more stable or more of safe havens really kind of retain their value, whereas the lower priced ones are a little more volatile. Mm -hmm. uh, how far back does your analysis go? Like, does that just primarily apply to the contemporary art market? Or is that something that you've noticed, you know, going back decades, centuries? Again, I know prices back then weren't as high as they are today. Yeah. Um, and then like adjusted for inflation, you know, if you do that, I don't know. We, um, we have, yeah, no, we've, we've looked at data uh, really going back decades at this point, we have spent a lot of time focused on high inflation period through the 1970s. Those are obviously extremely topical in, in high inflation uh, periods. And we've seen the art market perform extra extraordinarily well um, uh, during those times uh, as well. So uh, yeah, we've looked across uh, decades. You could certainly go back, you know, go back uh, uh, further in centuries. But at that point, you're you're looking at at you know old masters and and different uh, segments uh, of the art market at that point. Um, but uh, but no, we've got we've got a tremendous amount of data density that we uh, that we do look at. And, and shifting gears slightly now, kind of looking forward. What are what are your thoughts on non fungible tokens, particularly? Um, what impact are they having on the traditional art market? Uh, you know, and you know, are they a threat or are they a potential opportunity technology that uh, the art market takes advantage of? What's yeah. your assessment of NFTs and their impact? Well, what what I would say is, remember, art in general is obviously a highly dynamic market, and artists are constantly experimenting with new medium uh, in which to, you know, it, it, it express artistic creativity in, in a general manner. So, what I would say is, digital art, broadly defined, um, was not something invented by NFTs, but certainly NFTs. Um, uh, broad digital art um, to to the fore. Um, NFTs certainly had a significant moment um, some some years ago. We've seen that quiet down uh, almost almost uh, entirely. Uh, as you might imagine, we had 
uh, a lot of interest from existing investor base, our existing investor base um, around NFTs. Uh, would we add it to our portfolio? Would we provide opportunities to add it to our portfolio? Um, again, going back to first principles for us, what we need to be able to do is understand how a market has performed over time. Um, and that really allows us to create an investment thesis around that market. If we don't have data to be able to understand how a market has appreciated, it's impossible to create an investment thesis to begin with. And, and NFTs really, we really struggled with that um, from the from the NFT side. So the, the reality is we, we never added it to um, our portfolio. Um, we are constantly monitoring uh, the art market for new opportunities for our investors. And to the extent that um, NFTs do begin to build uh, really a robust foundation of uh, transactions and secondary market that allow us to observe um, how prices are moving over time uh, and really observe a long-term trend of appreciation. So we say, okay, well, this, is, uh, this is something that's sustainable. Um, then that's really the point we can begin to consider adding NFTs to our portfolio. Again, what is really core for Masterworks is we don't have to convince anyone that the art market is a brand new thing. The art market, again, has been around for centuries. The whole infrastructure of auction houses, art fairs, etc. these are well-established uh, market. So while the delivery mechanism masterworks as a way to participate and invest in that market um, may be a new entrant, the underlying market itself is not. And and where do you then see, so taking NFTs out of the picture, what do you see as potential opportunities in the future for art market expansion um, or, you know, for, or even for masterworks? Like what are areas that you think um, that would be great, you know, opportunities for companies such as Masterworks to expand into. Well, what's what's wonderful about the art market, again, it's a global market that continues to gain a, just an expansive audience. So whether it's individuals participating in the art market, buying and selling, um, obviously participating in um, uh, the robust economy of museums and institutions um, there's continues to be a lot of momentum and interest around um, the art market just from a, a secular um, tailwind standpoint you know as it relates to masterworks we believe we are still in the very early days of being able to make this uh, asset class uh, accessible to again any type of investor whether you're an individual investor um, or a professional investor. I think we're incredibly proud of the individual self-directed investor community that we have built um, to date. Um, that's really served as the backbone um, of uh, the company we have built. What we are starting to do on top of that is find ways for uh, investors who may not be managing their own portfolio, but may be working with a financial advisor. and having ways that that financial advisor can access investments that are managed um, by by Masterwork. So we've done that um, through partnering with major asset management firms, um, building mutual fund type products that can more easily interact with that financial advisor community. So we're incredibly excited about the early work we've done um, in that arena and we'll, we'll continue uh, to grow with it. There's also a lot we can do with our existing art portfolio. We get questions all the time. Where can I see the art? Um, is it hanging somewhere? Uh, can I have it in my home? Unfortunately, the answer to the latter of that is, is no, not at the time, although we were, were, cut, we're working on a variety of different ways to uh, be able to do that um, virtually. But um, we want to be able to share the collection we've built with the public. And I think this is something that, that really is not um, well uh, appreciated. While we keep uh, the, the collection in long-term storage, understandably for safekeeping, we're also incredibly excited when 
museums and institutions and foundations want to access work in our collection for their for their own shows. We've got an amazing Keith Haring collection um, with some of the his masterpiece works on display at a major museum um, in L.A. Keith Haring retrospective going on right now. That's true with other things in our portfolio. Our Basquiat portfolio have tra- uh, Basquiat pieces in our portfolio have traveled um, uh, around the world. So. We're just beginning to scratch the surface, and it's really only now, again, now that we're knocking on the door of a billion dollars in our art portfolio, that we're stepping back and say, we have an incredible opportunity to share this portfolio with the world. Yeah, you know, there's something you mentioned that kind of uh, inspired a thought was you said you'd like to make this available to museums. You know, is it something or is it a, uh, a a setup where you actually could have some of your artwork that is owned by your investors displayed, you know, for a fee and earn a return? Is that ever something that uh, that Masterworks does? Maybe maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. I'm just yeah. kind of curious. Yeah. No, the, the museum. Lo- well, museum loans generally uh, we are very active in. And again, the the L.A. Broad, uh, which is. Um, uh, showing the Keith Haring retrospective, as I mentioned, is a prime example of of our ability and really excitement um, in doing that. It's not there is not a a cash rental market in quite the way you uh, describe. We get that question all the time, and one that may indeed develop uh, over time, probably less with museums, but also, but you know, as much with perhaps more commercial establishments um, uh, that are looking to display art and can access the Masterworks portfolio to be able to do that. So those are those are areas that don't exist today, but we're incredibly excited to continue to explore those in the future. I, I had mentioned before that, you know, a lot of our viewers are either active military or veterans um, or government employees and are, uh, you know, those who are in that area or in that job market have kind of a limited method of investing for retirement. Um, uh, art is not generally viewed as one of them. And mm. I guess my question would be, you'd mentioned there's there's self-directed opportunity when it comes to investment. Uh, could a lot of what Masterworks does, either through a lot of these mutual funds you're talking about, or either, even you know buying you know shares directly, can that be put into an IRA? Is that you know IRA friendly or investment friendly uh, for retirement? Yeah, so two 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 ways that that could be done. Um, uh, you can invest Masterworks uh, directly through our what we call single asset investments. So, if you create an account, uh, Masterworks.com, have an opportunity to speak with one of our financial advisors, go through a suitability, really understand how does uh, a Masterworks fit um, into your uh, portfolio. Um, and start to really build um, uh, build a portfolio from there. That can be done in taxable accounts. It can be done in uh, tax advantage accounts, uh, uh, specifically self-directed uh, IRA accounts, which are very specific type of IRA account. Now, uh, more traditional um, IRA brokerage accounts are eligible for the mutual fund products uh, that we have worked with our uh, our investors on, and those are available through financial advisors rather than uh, the direct Masterworks.com product as well. Well, you mentioned you know Masterworks.com. If any of our viewers want to get in touch with you uh, or follow your work, you know what's the best way to do that. Um, well, first and foremost, I encourage everyone to uh, create an account uh, with Masterworks.com. If you're just interested to explore, uh, have a conversation uh, with one of our financial advisors who are just incredibly talented um, in understanding and explaining what the art market is all about, what we've invested in, how it's uh, moved over time, what are the risks, what are the benefits, and and importantly, whether this investment is suitable for portfolio, and and if so, help you start to uh, build a portfolio that's that's right for um, uh, your objective. So masters.com is a great place to start. Um, I love interacting with uh, with our investors or prospective investors. More than happy to um, uh, communicate with with any of you all. Uh, Patrick, happy to have you. Uh, you know, uh, hand out my uh, uh, email and and I can chat with you uh, directly or certainly uh, point you in the right direction here internally with those who can uh, who can work directly with you. Great. And what I can do is I'll, I'll post a link below to Masterworks 
uh, below this video for people to reach out. Uh, and if you want to share your, your email with me offline, I can post that too. Uh, was there anything else, Nigel, that you wanted to address as far as, you know, the future of art or, um, or investment opportunities? We really appreciate your time. Oh, this is great. Well, listen, the, I mean, the reality is the art market uh, isn't isn't going anywhere. It's a market that's had a lot of longevity. So, you know, the um, the opportunity for us is how do we avail of it, avail it to um, uh, to the investor community um, broadly, uh, broadly defined. Um, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, we have got really a, a world class team uh, that's acquiring art that's selling art, all the operations, storage, insurance, maintenance, logistics, all of the operations that really help transform that physical painting you might be seeing on a, on a gallery auction house wall into an investment, which is really a uh, company that can issue, uh, that can issue shares. So um, we're incredibly proud of the operation we've built that, that sits behind all of this and um, and really welcome um, interest among uh, your uh, viewership and client base uh, with Masterworks and, and happy to answer questions now or in the future as, as people may have them. Awesome. Nigel, thank you for your time. We really appreciate, uh, you know, your valuable expertise, sharing that with us and educating uh, some of our viewers, you know, on art. So uh, again, uh, thank you for being here and we'd love to have you back in the future. You bet. Thanks, Patrick. This was this was terrific. And uh, thanks again. And to the viewers, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe.